Hello everyone, this is Mitch and welcome to episode 0 of my Kerbal Space Program Let's Play slash tutorial series. So why episode 0? Because in this episode I'm going to show you the career options I'm going to choose for my uh, Let's Play and how you can tweak them for your own experience uh, when you start your own career in Kerbal Space Program, of course. So I'm going to go right ahead and start a new game. I'm not going to show all the uh, technical options. You can use the wiki for that. You can read the tooltips, search on Google. This is more technical. I want to talk to you about the actual game. So we're going to go ahead and start a new career. So default. Let's go with let's play. The flag, I don't have a custom flag, I don't care. Let's use, let's use the default one, why not? And career. Now, you could choose a sandbox. You have no limitations, you have access to all parts. Every building in the space center is fully upgraded. You could choose the science one, where once again, your space center is fully upgraded, but you do not have access to all the parts. You need to uh, actually gather the science to unlock them. And career, where you start with level 1 buildings, uh, no science, unless you change the options, of course. And you have limited money, you have reputation, and you have science to earn. So that's it. So we're going to do a career. I'm going to change the options and explain them to you. First of all, you have this. You have presets here, and if we click on them, you can see the slider is moving, some options getting ticked and unticked. So that's it. You have advanced options. Now, advanced options. Um, Kerbal experience, so astronauts gain experience doing missions. If you uh, tick this, they will start uh, with maximum experience. Uh, sorry, if you turn it off, they will all have maximum experience by default. Uh, this is uh, for Kerbals, again, for the experience. Your astronauts have uh, different skills, and they have different levels. So it goes from zero stars to five stars, and depending on their career, so a pilot, an engineer, or a scientist, they will offer different bonuses to your spaceships, uh, depending on their experience level. Now, normally, you only get experience once a carbonaut or an astronaut returns to the space center, not before. If you take this, they will earn the experience throughout the mission and they will become better even before they come back to uh, Kerbal, uh, Kerbin, sorry. Uh, allow negative values for funds and science fairly uh, self-explanatory, so you can go into the negatives. I'm not sure why you'd want that. Part pressure limits. Uh, as the tooltip says, some parts may break if you are in too dense of an atmosphere or too deep underwater. Eh, parts can already break with a lot of things, so for myself, I'm not going to turn it on. Part G-force limits, uh, if you accelerate too fast or slow down too fast, there is what you call G-forces that are applied to your spacecraft. Uh, these can already uh, break your spaceship apart, maybe not break the parts themselves, but they will break your spaceship even with this thing off. So I'm going to leave it off, it's, still, it's already difficult enough like this. Kerbal G-force limits, so you have astronauts in your spaceships, and again, if you accelerate too fast or slow down too fast, um, the G-forces may kill or make your Kerbals go unconscious. For example, if you have a pilot and no probe cores and your pilot goes unconscious, you will lose control of the vessel. I might actually turn that on. Kerbal G-force tolerance, so this is a multiplier. <coughs> Nothing fancy here, uh, if you put it at 1, I'm not sure exactly what is the limit. Probably around 10 Gs, I would expect. If you turn it up, oh, you can go all the way up to 10 times the original tolerance. 
or you can go below and make it very, very hard for yourself. I'm going to leave it on one. Resource transfer obeys crossfeed rules. Um, for example, if you have this off, you could just transfer rules manually using right clicks between containers, even if uh, the parts that are connecting the two containers are not necessarily made to uh, feed material. I'm going to turn that on, actually. Uh, always allow action groups. I'm going to turn that on. It's just annoying if you don't have that on. Uh, this is just to make to customize controls of a spaceship, for example, if you have solar panels and you want to deploy them or uh, put them back into their uh, little container, you can use those. Normally you are limited by the vehicle assembly building, uh, depending if it's upgraded or not. I don't care, I'm just gonna turn it on because technically you could use, you already have access to some action groups normally. So, I mean, yeah, it's just convenience here. Building impact damage multiplier, so technically you can destroy your buildings. I don't care for that. I'm going to leave it off. But you could make your buildings more uh, vulnerable or tougher, uh, depending on that multiplier. Part upgrades. So, when you unlock new parts or when you unlock certain technologies, maybe your parts upgrade, maybe they don't. I'm going to leave that off, actually. I don't want my parts to change because I've researched something new. Uh, require signal for control. So with Kerbal Space Program 1.2 patch, they've implemented a signal to control probe cores. So if you have a spaceship and you have no astronauts on board, but you have a probe core, you will need a signal to control it and what you can do depends on the signal strength. Plasma blackout, so basically when you're coming into atmosphere maybe you will lose signal strength. Eh, I mean it's realistic but let's be honest most people probably won't play with this. Uh, now I think because I hit easy some of the options are turned off. Yes, okay. So what did I turn on? Oh yeah this, 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 this I don't care about, I'll turn it off. This I do want, this, meh. Range modifier, so antennas have range, you can apply a multiplier to that range, make antennas more powerful or less powerful. I'm gonna leave it on one default. Uh, strength of the antennas, again for your signal strength, I'm gonna leave that on one default. Now occlusion modifier. Uh, basically the lower this is, the less objects get in the way for your signal. So the less, like at zero, I think you could basically, it doesn't matter if you're on the other side of the planet, you can communicate with your probe core if you are in range. I'm going to put that on one. If you don't have line of sight, then you are unable to communicate. And I'm going to put that on one too. I'm not going to enable extra ground stations, just to make it harder on myself. So that's it for the advanced uh, options. This is uh, for uh, communications again. This puts antennas all around the planet, so you don't need a basic... Uh, communication satellite network. I don't care for that. I'm going to make my own satellites. Basic options. Allow reverting flights. Um, if you're really hardcore, you could uncheck that. But honestly, NASA itself makes so many tests before sending something into space. Uh, I'm going to do the same, even though it's maybe a little you know, realistic for a simulation. <laughs> but I'm going to pretend that these are simulations Allow quick loading, yeah, it's, you know, sometimes you might hit a key by accident, and sure, astronauts might hit the button by astronaut, by astronaut, by accident, but um, I'm going to keep that on too, and so should you. This is basically, this lets you create saves during a mission 
so you can reload and maybe not screw up. <laughs> Missing crew responds, no. Uh, this is if you get astronauts killed, they will reappear in your astronaut building and be available for missions again, depending on this timer. I don't want that. If an astronaut dies, he's gonna stay then in my let's play. Auto hire crew members before flight. I'm not even sure what that does. I think that simply puts astronauts in every available slot on your spaceship automatically. I don't care for that. I can choose who I put where in my spaceships. Uh, entry purchase required on research. Again, when you research something, you may need to buy new parts if you don't check this. If you check it, you get all the parts for free when you get the research. Well, for free. If you put it on your spaceship, you're going to pay that one part, but if you have this unchecked, you will need to buy like the schematics for that part to be able to put it on a ship. I don't care for this. Uh, I'm going to check indestructible facilities. I don't want to destroy my space center. I don't care. Buildings are already expensive enough. And besides, I'm probably going to uh, revert flights that go horribly wrong, unless it's uh, really uh, my mistake and uh, and I think it's funny. Include stock vessels. I don't care. This gives you uh, schematics uh, to load in the vehicle assembly buildings in the space plane hangar. Don't care for that. Nah. Uh, Re-entry heating. Basically, can your ship burn up in atmosphere? I'm going to leave that on 100%. I don't think it's uh, really that much more difficult if you leave it uh, on 100%. Even maximum is 120%, and I don't think that's really that hardcore. You can actually bring spaceships back from orbit on 100% uh, without even a heat shield. So, yeah. Resource abundance, if we get into mining, it's going to be at 100%. Mining is already tedious. I'm not sure I'm going to do it, but if I do it, I don't want it to be extra tedious and take longer because there are fewer resources. So I'm going to leave that on 100%. Uh, mining is used, basically, you could uh, refine and create fuel in orbit uh, by mining resources and converting them. I'm not gonna, probably not gonna do that, but if I do, like I said, don't want it to be uh, more grindy than it already is. Com network, so do you need a signal to talk with probe cores? Again, this refers to this. I will say yes, this is a new feature. I think it's cool, it's fun. Uh, starting funds, I don't really care, 25,000, it's eh. The amount of money you start with, you could go crazy, but um, I'm going to start with the default for I think that was normal. Starting science, I'm going to leave it at zero. You could give yourself uh, certain amounts if you're uh, tired of collecting little tiny bits of science on the planet surface. You can give yourself something to start with. It may make the beginning less tedious. I don't care. I'm going to show you starting from scratch. Reputation, this is uh, the quality of the contracts you get. Again, I'm going to leave that on zero. If you put it higher, you will get, I guess, better or more lucrative contracts that give you more money if you complete them. I don't care. I'm going to earn my reputation. Science rewards. Now, this one I'm going to mess around with a little bit. I'm hesitating between 70 and 80%. It's definitely possible to go on the hard. Normally, this is 60%. Uh, I think this is the lowest it'll go. It's definitely possible to play with a, you know, 40-50% multiplier. Now, this affects every experiment you do, unless you use a mobile processing lab. I don't think this multiplier applies to the lab in, that you can put in space. But it applies to everything else, and there is more than enough science uh, in Kerbal Space Program to unlock everything. So I'm thinking maybe 80%. I don't want it to be too tedious, but I don't want to unlock everything from the start. Funds rewards, money, basically. 
uh, you can put a multiplier on that. I'm going to leave it at 100%. I don't want to grind reputation rewards. Same. I don't want to grind for contracts to improve. Funds penalties. So if you fail a contract, you lose the normal amount. You could make that higher or lower. Again, if you fail a contract, you have reputation penalties. I'm going to leave it just default. And decline penalty. Now this one I'm going to turn off, put it at zero, because this is before you even accept a contract. If you say, oh, okay, no, I, I don't want to do this contract, you will you would normally incur a one-point penalty. Now, in the long run, it's not a big deal. In the beginning, it's annoying, and there are lots of stupid contracts that I'm not going to bother with. So I'm going to put that at zero. So that's it. <clears throat> so that's it for all the options. Here we go and start. Let's play career custom difficulty Kerbal normal default flag start. So when you first start the game, this is what you will see in a moment. Nice to meet you, Gene Kerman. I'm Gene Kerman, flight director, blah, 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 blah. Hold the right mouse. I'm not going to explain the keys. You can read this when you play. So here we go. This is the space center. This is the runway launch pad. So if you have planes, you can take off from there. This is where your rockets launch from. Tracking stations or station uh, lets you see the whole universe. If you have a spaceship, a satellite, anything in orbit, you can see here. You can check all the options. You can show more things. You can show fewer things. You can time accelerate in here. You have the date. And you have uh, information about every planet. So for example, here, you can even see the atmosphere. Uh, atmosphere pressure, one, uh, everything, the sphere of influence, the time it takes to rotate. So for example, if I put a uh, satellite in orbit and it takes 5 hours, 59 minutes and 9 seconds to complete an orbit, it's going to be in stationary orbit because it's going to be spinning at exactly the same speed as the planet itself is spinning equatorial radius and so on resources if you have a scan or everything like that you can see that physical you have a little bit of information here that's it and you can go click on other objects you can zoom out minmus so we're still in Kerbin sphere of influence you can see everything so remember when I was talking about the uh, Delta V map, the first number I said to get on the same plane as that object. So for example, the moon uh, orbits Kerbin in a flat orbit. It's a uh, equatorial orbit. Minmus on the other end is slightly inclined. So the first number is for uh, getting on the same plane so that your orbit is parallel to this orbit. Sorry about the cut. Kitty, kitty fight. I had to break up. Didn't want uh, that to be on the microphone. So that was the uh, tracking station. Oh, uh, sorry. You can see even the other planets. You can see the whole system in the tracking station. So you have the star or Kerbal, the equivalent of the Sun. Moho, Eve, there's Kerbin, the own planet. You have Duna, you have Trace, you have Joule and its five satellites, I think. One, two, three, four, and yeah, there's a fifth line here. And we have Elu, even further out here. So I'm aiming to make a mission that goes to each of these places. And you can see all of them in the tracking stations. You can see your c 
communications network you can see everything from here this is uh, this is the place where you look at the system when you're not on missions so that's it you have the research and development building this is where you spend your science points to unlock new parts you have all the information here the cost the requirements and you can see everything and if you right click you can see even uh, the specifications for every part before you get there so make sure you know what to go for uh, in the beginning I would recommend to get uh, as many science experiments as possible so that's it so it's the uh, bottom of the three here so you, this is a science experiment um, yeah this I think there they're all unlocked you have uh, the mobile processing lab there we go atmospheric spectrometer survey scanner surface scanning for uh, mining uh, gravioli detection for gravity I suppose it's not a real thing but whatever uh, more scanners science junior the science container storage unit all useful things the barometer thermometer you have antennas this this part of the tree is super important at the top you have all the rockets and engines fuel tanks that kind of stuff also very important and if you're into space planes I'm not but you have all that in the middle of the tree that's it and in the science archives you can see every experiment you've run before that's it administration building you can um, have various programs here that will basically transfer one resource to another or have different effects like here see it doesn't cost as much uh, in research and development but you know we we don't have costs in uh, research and development but we have launch costs so if you were to start this program you could uh, reduce the cost of your rockets here um, recovery yeah the further you land your rockets from the space center the more money you lose and you can kind of offset this with that you uh, you don't get as much maximum but then you get a bonus to the minimum value so if you're not good at landing near the space center this could this could be helpful but yeah uh, milestone gains so when you're doing contracts and stuff like that uh, bailout so immediately lose reputation but you gain money you've got a lot of different options I don't really use this much myself but uh, know that it's there the astronaut complex so you have your four starting ast astronauts uh, you have their profession their career so Jeb is a pilot Valentina is a pilot you have Bob the scientist uh, Bill the engineer as you can see if you mouse over uh, engineers for example uh, yeah you even have the g-forces they can sustain you have the effects on drills I know there's a yeah repairing broken parts so the higher the number of stars the more they're able to repair things the better they are with drills and so on for pilots as you can see stability assists uh, vessel control without comet access that kind of stuff they give you flight options real nice scientists allow you to reset experiments very important in the effects uh, they also affect the uh, amount of experience you get back so on courage and stupidity they're just there for fun right now I don't know if they'll ever do something it's just there for fun really and here you can recruit new astronauts the more astronauts you have the more expensive it is so we'll get into that later but you can get astronauts by rescuing them uh, however crazy that is so you don't necessarily need this 
Then we have uh, the mission control where you get contracts. So we'll start on that in the next episode. The launch pad. Here if you have uh, built uh, different ships, you can basically choose from your saved ships uh, which one you want to launch. Uh, pick the crew. You can do that straight from here. Same with the runway. You can pick a plane, the crew, and that's it. Boom. Then you have the space plane hangar. We don't really have a space plane specific parts. We could build a rocket that launches uh, horizontally here, but eh. So if you wanted to build a plane, you can do it from here. You have access to all these parts like this. This is the actual building. This is the control groups I was talking about earlier. So automating things on uh, key, key bindings, the crew, name of the spaceship, mission flag, creating something new, uh, loading a design, saving it, launching it, and leaving. Here in the bottom, we have normal tabs and we have the Kerbal Engineer tab. So if we built something, boom, that's it. We have something built, we can see the information for it. So now it's just a common module, so there's no information, but you know, we could do all kinds of things. For example, if I stick a booster on there, oh, so suddenly I have the weight of the of the vehicle. Thrust to weight ratio. The, if this is under one, your vehicle will not lift off. It may move horizontally, but it will not lift off from the ground. You need at least one thrust to weight ratio to get off the ground. And delta V, this is the amount of acceleration. So in space, this number is actually perfectly accurate, technically. Uh, in atmosphere, or at least if you're not in an orbit, or orbit, orbit, sorry, um, then you will be fighting uh, either gravity and or the atmosphere. So even if I have a thousand, nearly a thousand meters per second, I will still crash back on the planet unless I can get into orbit because that delta V will be lost to the atmosphere and gravity. The amount of time this booster will run will burn. So we can see if I adjust the thrust, it will burn for longer. But the delta V stays, stays the same. The thrust to weight ratio, however, is lower. So this is a limit on how fast your fuel will burn, how strong your engine is burning, which can have a different set of applications, really. For example, this, this is probably too harsh for most astronauts. Uh, let's see, do we, can we even see? Yeah, max sustainable G-forces, 6.6. .6. So if we put Jeb in the pilot seat and fire this engine, he will pass out. This is... 8.36 G's. We will lose control of this rocket. And the higher the thrust to weight ratio in atmosphere, the more you will experience atmospheric drag. So if, if we were to really launch this vehicle, you want something a lot more manageable. Like I usually aim for one between 1.30, 1.25. And finally, you can also adjust the fuel like this. This reduces the maximum acceleration. This is your fuel, but you can also see the mass shifting. And that's it. The burn time, everything. So this is why Kerbal Engineer is really nice. And then we can see if we launch that vehicle from the moon. Oh, suddenly the thrust to weight ratio is much greater, but this is no longer G's. This is referring to the moon's gravity. So Jebediah, her pilot, wouldn't pass out. Okay, so that's it. And then you can see atmospheric, you can calculate altitude, because the atmosphere actually changes depending on the altitude, the speed, if it does anything to your vehicle. You can see all stages or not, and you can edit settings, you can make it more compact to see only the most important data. 
So that's it for the assembly building for now. Uh, don't save, who cares? And you have the same building, but for spaceships for the launch pad here. So instead of building horizontally here, you are building vertically because you want to go to space. So this is it. This is the Kerbal Space Center. So thank you again. If you like this series, please leave a, a like and subscribe. And that's it. For the next episode, we will actually start playing. Thank you for watching. See you next time.